Did you say enter? Did you ever think of getting a hearing aid, Sydney? Beg pardon? Oh, never mind. I brought the stockroom key back. Thank you. Don't forget it's the school concert this week. Pardon? The school concert. Oh, I'll get the hall ready. Good. I wonder what Mr Brown's class is going to do. Has he mentioned anything to you? Oh, not a dicky bird. No, no. As a matter of fact, I don't think any of them want to do anything. Oh, that's nonsense. Every class is expected to put on some sort of show. Better tell Mr Brown to come and see me at tea break. Pardon? Tea break. Oh, is it? Oh, I can do with a cup. <laughs> see you later. Right, now, uh, pay attention, everyone. Uh, as you may recall, when last we met, I gave you each, for your homework, a different task to do over the weekend. Hope you've all done them, yes? Oh, yeah. Good. Well, I want you each in turn to stand up and give me a report on your various activities, all right? Now, who'd like to begin? Hey, uh, we'll start at the back, shall we, with you, Jamila. Now, your homework was a visit to the cinema. Huh. Would you like to tell us about the film you saw? Huh. It was be about most beautiful top class Indian girl who is fell in love with boy from bottom class. Lower class. Huh. But girl's father is say, no, we get married. So they run away. But father is catch them and chop off boy's leggies. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Father is be die. One day, girl is see beggar man in street. Oh, it is her sweetheart. Ah, oh, she cried. No leggies, no matter. You be marry me. Okay, he say. I be go and be make myself look nice. What with no leggies? Huh? So he go. Wait, she cry and run after him. And then, blah, big motor car hit her and kill her. It was most miserable film, and I am enjoying it very much. <laughs> good, well done, Jamila. Very good. Taro. Asso. Yeah. <laughs> Your homework was a visit to London Zoo. Tell us about it. Arrive at London Zoo. No, no, Taro. No, uh, London Zoo. Start again. Arrive at London Zoo. London Zoo. There are no O's. Oh, yes, please. There are two O's in London and two O's in Zoo. <laughs> yes, absolutely correct, Ali, but I'm referring to the ends of the words, all right? Now, carry on, Taro, but do try and get out of the habit of ending every other word in O. I try. Good. Went first to see Buffalo. <laughs> Like a big bull. <laughs> a buffalo. <laughs> Terror, confused though. <laughs> yeah, words that uh, end in O, like buffalo or radio or vertigo, you pronounce the O, but where there is no O, you don't add one, understand? Yes, sir. <laughs> I give up. All right, Taro, thank you. Right, now, Ali. Yes, please. Now, I asked you to read one of Shakespeare's plays. Were you able to do that? Most definitely. I'm reading about Sherlock. You mean Shylock? Yes, please. The Merchant of Venice. Oh, good. Carry on. <clears throat> First of all, there is a lady porter. No, her name was Portia. Yes, please. Now, a man called Bassanio is fancying this lady porter, uh, Portia. Yes. But he is broken. Broken what? Stony broken and no money. <laughs> oh, you mean broke. Yes, carry on. So he's going to see his friend Antonio and saying, Oh, please be lending me 3,000 buckets. <laughs> Duckets. Sorry, please. But Antonio was also broken. So he's going to Shylock, the money lending man, and asking him to lend him the money. Shylock is agreeing, but on one condition. If in three months' time he's not paying him back the money, then Shylock could cut off a pound of Antonio's fleshy. Why is he wanting a pound of human flesh? My B is one of them cannonballs. <laughs> cannonballs. Oh, no. 
He is doing this because he is not liking Antonio. Anyway, Antonio is in a bigger trouble. He wrecked all his ships. Ships? <laughs> ships. And is not being able to pay back the money. Now Shylock is wanting his pound of flesh. But Lady Portia is pretending to be a lawyer man. And she is saying, agreement was for one pound of flesh and no drops of blood. Shylock has had it. How can he have had it when he is not getting it? <laughs> you damn fool. You are not understanding the Queen's English. I know the Queen is English. You think I'm stupid? Most definitely. Well, thank you, right. Thank you, Ali. Very well done. Right. Now, uh, Suli, your task was a visit to Petticoat Lane. Petticoat Lane, very disappointing. Oh, why was that? Not see one petticoat. <laughs> petticoat Lane is just the name of the place. Look, don't you find marketplaces interesting? Marketplaces full of capitalistic traders selling inferior merchandise to ignorant working classes at inflated prices. Chairman Mao, he always. No, no, never mind what Chairman Mao says. Thank you, Suli. Well done. Right, Ranjit, your task was a visit to Highgate Cemetery. And I am finding it very interesting. Good. Well, tell us all about it. Firstly, I'm seeing the burying place of Karl Marx. Ah, yes, the father of communism. But I'm not understanding which one he was. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Was he Chico, Harpo, or Groucho? <laughs> Karl Marx was not one of the Marx brothers. Thousand apologies. What else did you see? I'm seeing many beautiful gravestones. Gravestones. That is correct. And some of them have written on them beautiful words. I'm writing one down. You are gone, my dearest wife. Still, I feel no pain. For I know at heaven's gate we will meet again. <laughs> What's the matter, Giovanni? I can't help it, Professor. It's so sad. That poor husband, he must have loved his wife very much. Please don't be upsetting yourself. The husband is being very happy. How do you know? He's dying the year after. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm so happy for him. And they are both being football fans. Oh, how on earth do you know that? He's having put on his stone, united forever. <laughs> Jeep refers to him being reunited with his wife in heaven. Thousand other thousand apologies. Yes, well, thank you. Well done. Good. Right, uh, Giovanni, have you recovered sufficiently to uh, tell us about your visit to Speaker's Corner? Okay, Koki. <laughs> First, I take the tube to Heidi Park. Then, for an hour, nothing. Well, what do you mean, nothing? Nobody was there. Well, at ten o'clock on a Sunday morning. That's right. Well, that's strange. There's always people at Speaker's Corner every weekend. I ask at a policeman, why is there nobody here? And I find out why there is nobody there. Well, why was there nobody there? I was at the wrong corner. <laughs> I, uh, carry on, Giovanni. Excuse me, Mr. Brown. Oh, uh, yes, Miss Copley. What have you done about the concert? Pardon? Is everybody in this school going deaf? I want to know what you have done about the school concert. Concert? There has been a notice on the board for the past two weeks. You haven't read it. Um, well, I... Mr. Brown has read it. He was discussing it with us before you came in. Again, yes, yes, again. yes, yes, uh, I was. Good. Then what are you going to do? Well, I expect we'll all be there. I should jolly well hope you will all be there. But what I want to know is what your students' contribution will be. Contribution? Yes, what little party piece are they going to perform? Party piece? Well, uh... Eh, pardon, signora. It's going to be a surprise. Yeah, yes, it's, it's going to be a surprise. Well, I don't like surprises. I want to be quite sure that what they're going to do will be acceptable. So I suggest that uh, after tea break, you and your class can give me a preview of their intended performance. Hey. We help you out pretty good, eh? Yes, but not for very long. Por favor. We still have to think of something to do for this concert in less than half an hour. Yes, all right. With your brain and our talent, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Jimmy, 
Hey, Sid. Pardon? To me. To me. To me. No, over here. Not you, me. Oh, to you. Right. Oh, right. make your mind up. Let me it. I bought you a nice cup of tea, Mr. Brown. Oh, thank you, Glenn. There. Thank you. Here, what are they all going to do for the concert tonight? I shudder to think they're outside practising now. Oh, would you like me to do a bit? A bit of what? Well, singing, I was in the choir. Hmm? Oh. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your voice and sing. Turn Hosanna. it up, Gladys, you curdle the milk. Oh, don't you be so cheeky. <laughs> you like my voice, Mr. Brown? I think it's remarkable. Thank you. I could do your turn if you like. What, you sit? Yeah, you, watch this. Any old dying, any old dying, any, any, any old dying. He all looks sweet, talk about the sheep. You all look dapper, feeling up to your feet. Dressed in style, brand new tile. Father's old green tile. Wouldn't give you time for your old chain, old iron, old iron. Hey, I've never done that. Give it out. The bucket, the other. How's that? Oh! Right, come on. Hurry him up for me, Sid, will you? Oh, I'll get him in. All right, Mr. Brown. All right, finish rehearsing. You're running inside. Right, come along, everybody. Good, good. Well, what are you doing now? Yes. Señor Brown. Yes. Este es el programa para el concierto. Oh, for the concert? Ah, yes, good, yes, good, good. Right, come along, everybody. Miss Courtney will be here any minute now. I'm here now, Miss Brown. Oh, good. Um, would you like to sit there, Miss Courtney? Thank you. Yeah. I do hope I'm going to enjoy this. So do I. I wouldn't like to be embarrassed in front of our distinguished guests. No, no. What distinguished guests? Quite a few members of the Education Authority always come to see our concerts. I don't want a repetition of what happened last year. What, what, what happened? Mr. Jarvis's woodwork students were quite awful. They sang bawdy rugby songs out of tune. Mr. Jarvis still hasn't found another job. <laughs> How comforting. Right, would you all uh, come out here when, when, when I introduce you? I act as a kind of compare. Well, I shall stop you if there's anything I don't like. Right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Stop. Is something the matter? This concert takes place in the afternoon. Ah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all sitting comfortably. Stop. Now, what was wrong with that? Mr. Brown, by the time you and your class come on, the audience will have been sitting on those hard chairs for one and a half hours. I wouldn't mention anything about comfort if I were you. Ah, oh, no, right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The English as a foreign language class is proud to present a potpourri of music and laughter. And to start us off, we have from Hungary, Zoltan Zabo. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Ah, good afternoon. <laughs> Hungarian magic. Hungarian paper. Hui, hui, haira! Second Hungarian magic. Stop! You don't want second Hungarian magic? I don't think I even want first Hungarian logic. What, Charla? Oh, well, never mind, Zoltan. That's very good. Sit down. Yes. Uh, right. And now from Italy, the irrepressible Giovanni Cupello. Hey! Grazie, grazie. For you, I'm going to do some impersonations. Okie okay, cokey, here we go. Hey, you want a nice piece of salami? I've got a lovely piece for you. And who is that supposed to be? That's my butcher, Antonio. <laughs> we have never heard of your butcher. Maybe not, but if you add, it's a very much like him. <laughs> Can't you do any impressions of any well-known people? Sure I can. Jimmy Cagney. In a scene from the film, Disaster on the Fifth Avenue. You dirty rat! Oh, you dirty, dirty rat! Oh, you dirty rat! I'm gonna fix you! Oh, you dirty rat! I haven't finished well, yet! Well, Mr. Cagney sounds remarkably like your butcher. <laughs> and now, from France, the delightful Daniel. Say, thank you. 
la 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 Do you know any of the words, Daniel? I do not sing the words, I just dance to the music. And what is all this off business? That is when I'm taking off my clothes. You <laughs> can't have that sort of thing going on. It is not going on, it is coming off. <laughs> not in my school. But I... Yeah, well, thank you, Daniel. Well done. Oh, Jolly good. Yes, yes. <laughs> and now, from the mysterious East, we have to sing for you, Taro Nagazumi. Oh. I sing for you a traditional Japanese song called A Warrior's Lamento. Tell me, stop. Because it was awful. Oh, I thought it had a certain style. Yes, yeah, sickening. <laughs> Sorry. You'll not like her, my son. Ah. And now, from Germany, will you welcome with her animal impressions, Anna Schmidt? <laughs> Danke. I would like you to come with me on a walk in the Black Forest. First, we meet a farmer and his dog. Woof, woof. <laughs> the dog is chasing the sheep. Ba, ba. <laughs> and the cows. Moo, moo. <laughs> ah, here comes a man on his horse. Nay, nay. No, no, Anna. <laughs> Nay, nay, nay. No, no, you're supposed to make the actual sounds like whoop, whoop, or ba, ba, or mmm. I can't do that, hurts my throat. Oh, no, well, thank you for trying anyway. Jolly mm. good, well done. Right, uh, and now from China, with something peculiarly Chinese, will you welcome Miss Chung Su Li? Not a party political broadcast. Can't you sing or anything? I can sing song of revolution. Oh, no. <laughs> right, and now it's time for a little comedy from Ali Nadim and Ranjit Singh. Yay! There's a little yellow idol to the north of Kathmandu. I am saying, I am saying, I am saying. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> as being like an elephant. Why is a rhinoceros is like being an elephant? Because neither of them can ride a bicycle. I'm not going to know that. Please be leaving the stage. There is a little yellow idol to the north of Kathmandu. I am saying, I am saying, I am saying. Stop! You are not liking us? No. Oh, what did you expect, Morecambe and Wise? If you are wanting, we can be doing Morecambe and Wise. I could be the fat, short one with the hairy legs. And I'd be being the one with the glasses. <laughs> uh, so we'll discuss it later. Thank you. Very well. Very good. Very good. Right. Our next student to entertain you with a little culture is Jamila Ranja. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am telling you beautiful English poetries by Thomas Gray. Huh? Elijah, written in country churchyard. Elegy. Sorry, Master G. The curfew tolls the knell of par. Ding day. Ding day. The love 
Something heard wind slowly o'er the lee. The fluffman homeward plods his dear relay and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Incredible. Yeah, I'll work on her pronunciation. Thank you, Jamila. And now, from Spain to entertain you, comes Juan Cervantes. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Mr. Brown, he tell you I am from Spain. That surprised you, eh? When I speak, I have no accent at all. <laughs> In Spain, one time, I was going to be the bullfighter. So, one Sunday afternoon, I go to the bullfight, and they put me in the bull ring. <laughs> the bull comes out. I look at the bull, and the bull, he look at me. The bull, he look at me, and I look at the bull. <laughs> and you know one thing? <laughs> the bull was better looking than me. <laughs> hey, why you no laugh? <laughs> so I. So I not become the bullfighter because I don't kill pretty bulls. <laughs> Good, huh? <laughs> now, you never saw me dance the flamenco. I do it very good. Oh, and finally, to um, to complete our contribution, Greece and Sweden combine. Maximilian Papandreos and Ingrid Svensson. <laughs> Okay. And now my beautiful assistant and I are going to do some uh, jiggling. Juggling. Okay. Are you ready up? Hi, ready, Ham. Okay. Whee! Hey! Hey! Well, Mr. Brown, I think I think we can write your class off. Oh, oh please, Miss Courtney, the students will be so disappointed. I mean, we still have three days. Just give us a chance. Eh? Oh, well, very well. But remember this, Mr. Brown: good jobs are hard to find. <laughs> Watching them myself. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment, here is Jeremy Brown and his United Nations. Thank you. 